Welcome back to the second segment of NTV Exclusive. Um, my guest today, Kahar Chowdhury, a local, uh, local community leader, community activist, community hero. You can call them whatever they want, but the main thing is we've got them in the community. Um, and yes, just before we went on uh, the commercial break, um, Kahar Bay, you were talking about this great Eid event that you yes. sort of helped organise in, in the popular area and getting together different aspects of the community, different members of the community, different ethnicities of the community. Um, but there was no stopping there, was it? Because you got different businesses together as well. Yes, I did. I did. So um, there are, um, on Poplar High Street, there are uh, some local businesses. So I, I visit them regularly, you know, try to provide that support. It's all very well saying, you know, we, we're supporting local businesses. But we also need to get them involved. So they feel they are part of the community because some of the businessmen, they don't live in the locality. So they feel they're part of that community. And also what that will do then is they will value the community that they are operating in and they will make contributions to, towards it. So if you like, it's imputing a social responsibility upon them as well. And um, fortunately, I had local businesses uh, come down to the event as well. So we had a whole range of people attend the event and I thought it was uh, really successful and very important. We had local politicians as well, but I won't make reference to them, uh, attend uh, who were elected, so uh, attend the event. Um, it was very important and pertinent because of what was happening, like I said before, uh, with, with post-Brexit, that we bring our communities together, we have uh, greater community cohesion and understanding amongst our different communities and that we work together for the betterment of that locality. End of the day, we live there, we're neighbours to each other and we're part of that community. So. Um, with local businesses, um, I, I organized an event to open a local business, so um, do the opening ceremony. So we had all the, um, uh, including the speaker and other elected officials attend, uh, and local uh, community people, community organizations as well. So it's all, it, the idea is to bring all of the communities together, connect it together, share ideas and do things together, including the local mosques, you know, officials from the local mosques mosque committee had attended the event as well and they were they were very pleased with uh, uh, you know from from both of our mosques in Poplar and I think that that's really important bringing everyone together and doing things together then our voices are stronger as well and if any issues arise then we can raise them and we're you know we're stronger together in addressing them as well and making demands and whether it's to politicians or the establishment it's interesting um, can you talk about issues because obviously um, um, of late, um, I mean, social media has <coughs> made go viral uh, the recent police brutality. Um, well, I, I mean, obviously we have to be careful because um, mm. mm. it's going through litigation at the moment. Mm. But uh, mm. I mean, the, late, the recent police brutality um, spat that was caught on video and went viral, um, that's, that's now, you know, it's... It's, it's something that the community is fully aware of. Um, but the thing was, that wasn't the first if we, um, of, of recent incidents because, I mean, your area again, Poplar, yeah. that's gone through a similar sort of um, in incident, but video ca um, images aren't there to make it Yes, exactly. What's different in this occasion is there were video evidence. And uh, similarly, uh, there was another uh, occasion, that uh, incident that occurred. Uh, a week after of a 13 year old girl and uh, you know she was dragged across and it's all in the media mm. and it's just unbelievable and she had discussed how the police can operate like that and I think a lot of it emanates from you know this this mentality and the shift of mentality has to happen here and the mentality has been you know ingrained from I think you know the section 41 aspect of the terrorism act where you know you can stop and search and so on and disproportionately it was the BME community that was subject to it you know and they were stopped and searched and I think the, that's, that's somehow you know 
put into some of these police officers, largely the police force is there to protect us, and they do a very good job. But some of these individuals, you know, it appears that, you know, they are abusing their power. And a, you know, swift reaction is needed because otherwise it will culminate a, a culture of you know police using excessive force mm. especially with the with the young young girl and you know and usually if you if you look look at the police officers they very very big people you know mm. and a recent incident you know that i i had been involved with because i was approached in poplar as well and it was with a uh, disabled uh, lady, you know, and the police alleged that you know she had attacked them and she was obstructing them from the from carrying out their duties and perverting the course of justice, and it was unbelievable. And then, you know, rightly so, when the matter went to court, the magistrates threw it out. And um, it's this reoccurring uh, uh, incidents that you know are happening, and that needs to be brought to an end. And um, there are there are people who are leading that. So um, our former uh, councillor Abdalullah, uh, councillor Rabina Khan, and there are many others in the community who are leading that fight. You know, with the, with the police. So something is done about it. So what they what the and and the mayor himself uh, has come out. You know, very clearly. You know, condemning it and saying um, an investigation is is uh, demanded he demanded an investigation that you know this needs to be looked into not only that i think you know at this stage um a apology is appropriate obviously these officers should not be outside dealing with those i read in the advertiser that they they are restricted to desk duties rightly so so the police are listening uh, so I think that is a that is a result at this stage, and later on, uh, pending the investigations, you know, and dependent on the outcomes, I think you know, an apology needs to be issued. Mm. Police need to instill the confidence of the community, you know, uh, back into the, back into the police by doing that, working closely with the communi uh, with the communities, all our communities. You know, the 13-year-old girl was a white girl, you know. And that, that made me really angry when I saw that video. Can you imagine the trauma this child is going through at, at this stage of her life, you know, to be treated like that, like a piece of meat? I mean, it's uh, absolutely absurd. So, and then, sorry, um, what we, the apology and uh, thereafter, there has to be, you know, uh, these officers have to be reprimanded, obviously, if, if it's well-founded and um, they must face the legal consequences of that. And um, after which I think um, the, there has to be better safeguards and procedures so we avert such occurrences in the future you know, within the police force. Mm. It's interesting, um, you know, you've mentioned two incidents in Poplar, 13-year-old girl being dragged by police. Oh, that, that's after the, no, not the, not, that's not in Poplar. Sorry. Oh, sorry, that's not in Poplar. No, no. Okay, so that was an incident that, that you, in, you were yeah. aware of. And yeah. obviously we had the incident with a disabled mother yeah. uh, where police yeah. forced entry into the yeah. home for her child. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, in, in the process arrested her, mm. um, which is amazing. I mean, what I, what I find interesting, um, I mean, this, the most recent one that went viral on, on, mm. on, on, mm. on social media, where, um, where the police have actually, you know, it's, it's there full on evidence regardless mm. of what led to the situation yeah. the spe yeah. specific incident of spitting it was mm. there and clear and yet they've they've not said anything or, or uh, um, done any apology towards that but um i i, I remember only a few months before that th mm -hmm. there was talk of um police actually when they, when they arrest anyone by mm. default they would get these spit hoods mm. and Really, I mean, I just wanted to probably get your opinion because you talk about, um, you know, the police need to work together. If, if these sort of rules are applied and, you know, by default when you arrest someone, you have to immediately put a spit hood on them, um, is that going to not cause even more um, sort of tension between the community and the police? Yeah, and I, I mean, that's why I say I suggest that, you know, regardless of uh, the outcome, the uh, final point being is uh, that we need better safeguards and procedures so that this sort of 
you know, uh, occurrences don't occur again, um, in particular with the, the issues you raise, you know, and it's it's more more to do with the heavy-handedness, you know. Mm. Sometimes you can just approach somebody, you can have a chat about, uh, you know, obviously the police, if, if they are called, uh, they are duty-bound to investigate, um, you know, uh, if there's an allegation of crime or whatever is uh, they've been called for in particular with the crime. So if they are at the scene and they find someone, you know, there are certain uh, procedures that they need to follow, you know, and that's set out, obviously, uh, in the PACE uh, Act. Um, so, um, yeah, I think it's looking at more, you know, generally and uh, uh, at the, the heavy-handedness, that they, more specifically rather, at the heavy-handedness of uh, police, mm -hmm. you know, when they are making arrests and so on. At times, uh, you know, people are compliant and it's, it's unnecessary and sometimes people are innocently there at that place, you know. Uh, you know, we, we, we've looked at the, uh, um, <laughs> the, the frown of, of the local community, mm. but I think we should be looking at actually the, the smile and, mm. and, and, and the mm. great things about the mm. local community. Mm. Um, I mean, let's, let's just look at some of the more bigger things in Poplar, because I mean, obviously, mm. you, you can give us a lot of feedback about the BME forum that's out there, mm. um, that's sort of getting all the different ethnicities together. Mm. Um, I mean, tell us a bit, bit about that. Well, Apart from its allegiance to whatever it may be, I mean, yeah. it's general yeah. ethos and, it, and, 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 and the intention of the, of the forum. Yeah, so um, it's, it's nationally formed by a particular political party, which I'm part of. Um, I shall not make any reference to it. Yes, no. Yeah, so um, in Tar Hamlets, uh, we've, um, I'm the secretary of it, and I've had the opportunity to actually develop that. And um, before it was effectively uh, not doing as much, but when I got involved and the chair, we formed a committee, and then subsequently we took it forward doing uh, various activities, raising issues, concerns of, uh, of of the BME community, also celebrating the achievements of BME community. You know, we've had um, successful politicians, you know, now come to the fore. You know, with the other communities like. Um, um, obviously the BME as well, so like the Pakistani, the Indian communities, they've been well advanced, you know, of the Bangladesh community. And recently we have more, you know, um, very um, talented politicians, you know, coming forth. So it, it is a vehicle for that, but it's also a vehicle for activism, you know, uh, against racism and uh, other stuff. So we participated in the um, Cable Street ATF uh, March as well, um, uh, just uh, f uh, a week or two back, and um, so we attended that and we participated in it, and many people did. And again, it's a standing together in solidarity against hatred, you know, what, uh, and it was committed in the, the 1930s, you know, against our Jewish brothers and sisters, and they were brave to stand. And I, I think we have a lot to learn from those lessons, you know, when we unite as a community, we can stand against all these evil forces that, you know, uh, have the sole intention of harming us and destroying us. Has it become that? I mean, because mm. in the beginning, people were saying hate mm. crime, hatred, mm. um, racism, it was a lack of education. Mm. Um, I mean, now we're 30 years into educating people to mm. be, accept diversity, accept racism, accept religious and moral beliefs. Mm. So after doing th so many years and years of educating, has it become that, that those that are still being racist and, 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 and you know, bigots or whatever you want to have when you refer to them, are they just outright evil now? Because I think I think lot of the lot of the people when they are challenged, you know, when they have this sort of views and they're challenged, you know, and they can see see that. But many out there don't feel that, and I think there's a there's a, um, a deviation with the use of uh, uh, freedom of speech in the sense that they think it's free freedom of speech to say this or do that or, you know, have these sort of feelings mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, and hate towards a particular community. And I think they don't understand the distinguish, in distinguishing yeah. between the two. And it's some of that. And like you say, um, you know, 30 years ago, maybe um, it, it would be a range of stuff like that. But there are people out there, you know, um, 
and recently we've seen, you know, after the BNP and all that have been defeated in um, Milwo, um, you know, through the political process, mm -hmm. and then recently in Barkin as well. It's not, it's not a long time ago, you know, and they have been reoccurring. And with the with the um, National Front has taken many shapes, you know, and we EDL and so on and. Their hate is particularly, you know, steered and uh, uh, towards a particular community, and that is namely the Muslim community. You mm -hmm. know, it is it is getting the backlash of all this hatred, you know, all yeah. across Europe and everywhere. And I think historically, you know, Europe hasn't been all that intolerant, whereas in the United Kingdom we have been more, you know, as a society. Uh, uh, and our history says we've been more tolerant mm. of different ethnicities, religions, and diversities. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's really nice that you brought onto that because we still got Brexit to talk about. We still got a few more other things to talk about in the local community. Going for a quick break, inshallah, don't go away. We'll be very with you very shortly. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>